Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. In this video, we're going to look at creating a web, Blazor WebAssembly application with AAD authentication. So first, let's create the apps. We're going to need uh, an app for the kind of like front end kind of like web service and then an app for the Blazor client side that will authenticate the user on behalf of the user to the web service. So let's start creating the, the front end application. So we're just going to create a new registration and let, let's call it AAD auth uh, front end. And then right now we're just going to do single tenant. So only our tenant will be able to uh, access it. We don't have to set up any redirect URLs. So we're just going to go ahead and click register. So right now, if we create a Blazor application, which is WebAssembly, Visual Studio does not allow you to do AAD authentication. So we have to do this in the command line. So we're going to do this. So first, we're just going to do it in Sublime. Uh, so in here, I have the command we're going to use. I'm going to copy it in the video description. And as always, just a reminder, all the code of all my videos are in my GitHub. So if you want to reference the code or copy something, uh, just so you don't have to retype at all, feel free to go to my GitHub and get it. So let's walk through it. So .NET new, we're creating a WebAssembly single org. So that means uh, we're only doing one tenant, which is what we selected in the app. And then we're going to have API client ID. So that's this app ID that we just copied, um, which I'm going to do it in the bottom. In the bottom, I already have kind of like getting started with the stuff. Um, and then app URI this is where your app is going to be. Uh, that's a redirect. We're, we're going to change it later. Um, so in here, I just have a placeholder. Then client ID. So that's the new app that we also will have to create. And then scope will cover that later. Then the domain. So that's the domain of your tenant. So in our case, Conway Flamingo, Gmail, or Microsoft.com. And then this is hosted, so it will have a backend. And then tenant ID, so that's my tenant ID, which you can get from here as well. And then the name of the file that I, I want to, the solution that I want to create. So now let's go back here and we're gonna, so this one is not gonna log in the users. So just to keep it clean, we're just gonna remove the graph permissions, uh, not really needed. So we might as well remove it. And then we're going to expose an API. So that goes back to in here. If you if you saw, we had like the default token and default scope to be API access. So that's going to make it that all users, when they try to get the token, they'll get that uh, claim. So we have to expose that here. So we're going to add this scope. And this is just going to create this. We're going to have to copy that later. So scope, scope name. And then in here, you can put what it is, so application access. And in here, if your users are going to consent, you can set something different. In this case, we're just going to make it either way. I'm the only one using it, so I'm not going to cover that. Um, so we're going to add the scope. Now we're going to create the client application. So we have created kind of like the server side application. So now let's go back to here and we're just, we're going to create another one. AAD uh, client and we'll add the re redirect URL later just because we don't know what's going to be in our visual studio and eventually when you change it to product you should only have your product once uh, so we're just going to click register and now we have to add the permission to be able to talk to the previous uh, API that we created so in here we can see uh, the front end that we created we want to give it access to this so we're going to add permission and i'm not logged in as admin so i'm just going to log in as admin real quick but in here you would email your admin or something to grant it the permission but in here we're just going to go here and i'm just going to log in as admin we're going to go to the app registrations and your front end sorry i want to go to client api permissions and here we're just gonna grant it admin consent. So now it has admin consent. So if we refresh, it should have admin consent now. So that's just so the users don't have to consent. If not, 
each user every time uh, the first time they log in they would have to consent uh, but it's optional not, it's not required so now we can create the project so we're gonna copy the application ID and we're gonna fill in the blank so here to the client ID so now we're gonna copy this and go to PowerShell and, and run this so let's go here I'm already in the place where I want to be so I'm just gonna do this and we're gonna run it so now if we go here and we just do an LS we we have the folder so we have the folder here with all this stuff so we're just gonna open this so now we have our project loaded let's just run it make sure that everything is running so we can see it's running, but as I said, we, we haven't added the redirect URL, so we're going to copy this URL. And we're going to go back here. And we're going to add in authentication. I mean the wrong one. Authentication. And we're going to add a platform, and we're going to do web. And we're going to add the redirect URL, but we also have to add slash authentication login callback. You have to give it access for access token and ID tokens we're gonna configure it. So now we have everything uh, .NET should have created everything so let, let's just go through to see what they added. So everything here in the server side is the same. They just added it to startup that they're using AAD bearer authentication and they're using the options. So if we go to the app settings, we can see that it's uh, to this instance in this domain, in this tenant with this client ID. So now if we go to the client side, that's where more changes changed. So there is a login display that is added to the top bar. So in the main layout, you'll see it has a uh, controller of lo login display. And there's a redirect to login, so if the authentication fails, it'll just redirect you to basically if you haven't authenticated, it'll redirect you to uh, login. And then there's an authentication page. And then in the program, they added this. So they're adding the MSAL authentication and they're doing this API, we have to change this. So if you remember, I said that we have to go back to the front end application and copy this. So this is where we're gonna paste it. So this is in the program.cs. And for some reason, if you leave the API thing, you get an error, a token error, and the documentation says like, yes, if you copy everything, you'll get an error, so remove the API. So that's what you have to do. Uh, hopefully they'll fix it in the future. This is very new. This just came out right now, so hopefully in the future, uh, Visual Studio will allow you to just create everything on your behalf and do everything on your behalf. And if, if you see here, it's creating an HTTP client and it's adding the authentication so it will automatically attach the tokens to your backend anytime you call the backend with the default http client it will call it um, and if, if you want please let me know in the comments if you want to see other videos where we use the same token for different applications so like for example once i used it for calling graph on the client side so maybe to do an autofill like if they're inputting like a username or something you might want to call graph from the client side to be able to do the autofill instead of calling your server and your server calling graph. Something to do, uh, you, you have to change the client to have multiple clients. But now if we go to fetch data, that's the one they changed to be authorized. So if you see they add the authorized art, uh, attribute and they inject the HTTP client. And when we see they put the usual forecast call inside a try and catch, where if the access token is not available, which basically is an exception you get if you haven't gotten the access token, then they um, will uh, redirect you to the login page. Um, 
So now let's run it and it should work. Alright, so as we can see here we have the login button, but also if we go to fetch data it should redirect us. So let's just try to go to fetch data and redirect. And as you saw it redirected me and it automatically logged me in because it has my uh, cookie saved, but if we open this in a browser where I have more than one account. It'll redirect me to this figure and then I can pick and sign in. And now I'm here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.